down some. But I come to speak to you today about the word consequence. That's not the topic. Consequence. And the Lord showed me recently how important it is. You see, the Bible uses shall and will a lot. And these words, shall and will, are normally really in the future tense. They're in the future tense. And when we talk about shall and will, we think of the future. But the way the Bible uses it many times, shall and will are words of consequence. You jump in the pool, you shall get wet. It's not five years from now, ten years. You do it now, it's going to happen now. Consequence. And so I want to take you, first of all, to the first negative consequence that human beings experienced. And I'm using the negative so I could accentuate the positive. I really want to talk about the positive. But when we recognize the power of the negative, I always tell Satan when he comes against me, like Pastor Simon was saying, he makes me know that God is great. When the negative comes, the positive rises up. So the first negative consequence is when God told Adam, the day that you eat of the fruit, you shall die. Well, of course, Adam and Eve, they ate of the fruit. And you know, when I was reading that, when I study, I study with prayer, and the Holy Spirit is real to me, very real. And he reveals things to me sometimes different to what we might have been saying, what we might have known, what the tradition might say. And the Holy Spirit said to me that that die that the Lord God talked about is not dying in spirit. His spirit didn't die. It's not, yes, there is a spiritual death, but that's not what God was saying. He was actually saying the day that you eat of that fruit, fruit, death shall be the experience of man out of this world. He was bringing in death from immortality to mortality. And you know, every time I had to preach, sometimes the Lord will give me a confirmation. And this morning I was listening to a Catholic priest. His name is Father Cedric. He's a good man, very good man. You, know, you ought to listen to him. I listen to everybody. I listen to Joel Osteen. I listen to people. I listen to that. I listen to Prophet Jason. Everybody. And he, you know, he confirmed this morning that when God made man, he made him for immortality. It was sin that brought in mortality. So the death that God was talking to Adam about was the death the man became from immortal to mortal. And after a while, God always confirms his word to me from his word. Now, when I look at some of the translations, the, um, in, the, in the young um, literal translation, he says, for in the day of thine eating of it, dying, Thou shalt die. In other words, that's how you're going to come out of this world. There's a translation called uh, the Bible in basic uh, English. It says, the day you eat of it, death will certainly come to you. But the Lord has had, had, had already told me that. And the Vulgate, which is the Latin, um, Latin translation, you have translated back the Latin. It says, you will die a death. And when God was punishing Adam, he said, dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. That was not God's original plan. It wasn't. It was immortality. But I thank and praise God because God took action and he sent Jesus Christ. And the Bible says he abolished death and he brought life and immortality to light. And that is why we have immortality now. To Jesus. But the fact I want to make to you is that there is a consequence. And when God speaks, it happens. And he spoke the word and so men, men or human beings began to die. They didn't, he didn't die right away, but they, they died. We are dying because God said so. And when God said, let there be light, there was light. And when God said, be fruitful and multiply, that's why you can't get together on married saints because you're going to multiply. You've got to be married. Because it's going to happen. What God says happen. So when you understand that what God says happen, you ask yourself the question, 
why it is that some of the things that God has said or is saying to you is not happening. God's word does not return to him void. God speaks publicly. He speaks privately. His public speaking comes from his word. It's public. Everyone can read the word. His private speaking comes through dreams, visions, revelations. So let us look at some of the public speaking that God spoke. Uh, particularly when he used the words shall and will. Those are powerful words. Don't bring it all the way down to the future. Yes, he told uh, um, Abraham that, you know, his seed shall inherit the earth and all of that stuff. And God waited a few years, over what, 20 years or so before it happened. But once God said it, it will happen. So let us look at the public message, the public words of God. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you six things. How to be saved from damnation or how not to perish. How to have your needs met and your desires fulfilled. How to guarantee safety. How to prosper materially. And how to have success in careers and callings and ministries. All of that in the word of God. I stand before you today. Some time ago, I said to you, I was in much pain in my two feet. Uh, sick with this or plantar fasciitis. A lot of pain. And I told you, it's going to go. Praise God. I could testify today. I don't have it. It has gone. I stand, to you to, I, stand, I stand before you today knowing that I have some. We all have issues. I have some issues. Some medical issues. But I stand before you today to tell you that too, it too, shall go. Because of God's shall and his wills, because of consequence. But you see, consequence demands action. And the topic today is attention. Action needed. Sometimes we look at the results alone. And we forget the action that will bring the results. Saints, I really want us to be helped today because I, am, I was helped Definitely, in studying this, in preparing this, and I'm on my way. And I want us to be helped today. Actions will bring the consequence. So attention, action needed. So the first, the first um, words that I'm going to look at where God has used shall and will, you know, to, to bring about consequences. How to be saved from damnation or how not to perish. The Bible says in Mark 16, 16. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Plain and simple. Shall. Not after you die. Believe, be baptized, you shall be saved. Jump in the swimming pool, you shall get wet. It's the same thing. Believe and be baptized. Now how many of you sitting here, you don't have to raise your hands. You believe and you have not been baptized. Why are you disobeying the word of God? He says, believe and be baptized. You shall be saved. And he said, but he that does not believe shall be damned. The unbeliever is presently damned until he or she makes that change. It is a sure thing just as how man died when God said he shall. Until he changes. He is damned. But I thank God that those of us who have believed and are baptized, we've got it. We have got it, saints. We have already passed from death unto life. We're not going back there. But I'm just showing you the power of God's shall. The second point I want to make is how to have your needs met and your desires fulfilled. I'm talking now to children of God. And those of you who are not saved, you have to become saved in order to draw from the word of God like this. John 15, 7 says, oh, I had given this scripture, sorry, yes. John 15, 7 says, Jesus is speaking, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, 
You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Jump in the pool, you shall get wet. Eat the fruit, you shall die. Abide in me, my words abide in you, you shall ask. Now some people are afraid, they talk about uh, God is not interested in your, in, in, in your wants, he's interested in your needs. But I, I don't know about all of that fancy talk. I abide in the Son of God. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He's my Lord. I, I rest in him. His Holy Spirit is in me. And when I speak, when I ask in his name, I'm asking according to his will. And if I'm not asking according to his will, as a loving father, he's going to divert me. I hate to, 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 to give you all my personal business, and my wife doesn't like that, but I use my business to, 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 to make a point. We prayed for our house, to, our house to, to, to be sold. We really needed the house to sell to pay off bills and stuff like that. But God had told me some time ago that the house maybe should not be sold. And I prayed. I said, Lord, okay, your will be done, whatever it is. He diverted and he gave us a tenant, and we were very happy. So sometimes he will divert. It doesn't mean that he doesn't want to answer. Sometimes he gives you something better. And he knows what he's doing. So don't be afraid to ask God. It's going to be all right. Sister Becky, it's going to be okay. Abide. How do you say it? Abide in him. And abiding in Christ, abiding in Jesus, simply means recognizing the reality of your salvation. You cannot go any other, any other place. There's no other way. You are in him. When I talk to the Father in the name of the Son, I am talking with boldness. I'm talking that I have it. I don't know what else to do. Seriously, if I could have bought, bought a ticket or something and get it with a different story, I have nothing else but the Son of God. So abiding in Him means you have to recognize your totality, your completeness. Your completeness as a child of God. And do not look for anything else to help you to get to God. Just Jesus. Jesus. And you abide in him. And his words abide in you. This morning in Sunday school we were talking about some of his words. Get to know some of his words. Like love your enemies and do good to them that hate you. And pray for those who despitefully use you. And bless those that curse you. And give to those that ask you. I mean get to know Jesus' words. And let his words abide. And you abide in him. And case closed. You shall. You shall. And I could imagine, you know, you know, Father Abraham, when the Lord told him that he shall. And a few years, you know, going by, and it's not happening. I don't know how Abraham did it, but the Bible says he kept faith in God. And they say Sarah laughs. I believe sometimes Sarah was laughing at Abraham, you know, sometimes. When Abraham wake up in the morning and she's laughing at Abraham, you know. She's laughing, but Abraham is believing. And believing, you have to take action. Yeah. Abraham didn't say, Lord, send it down from heaven. He had to take, I don't know how he did it, but he did it. Yeah. He took action. And the action that we have to take is telling God thanks. Telling God thanks. I receive it, God, because I have asked. Because your son. That's the action. Tell him thanks. You're telling him thanks based on his word. His son told you, if you abide in him, and he, he abides in you. You shall ask. You see, that's the other thing is this. You will ask what is right. I put in a little note there for myself. Because if you are abiding in Christ, the Holy Ghost abides in you. you, you you're not going to ask for some crazy thing. You're not going to do You're going to ask for what is right. And he says so. So because of that, you start telling him thanks. And the enemy will come with the same problem against you over and over. To discourage you. Can you imagine what Abraham had to deal with over, what, 20 years? Can you imagine that? Come on. But God did it eventually. And God has already done it for you. Because the word of God says so. So how to, how to have your needs met and your desires, your desires fulfilled. Okay? Are you getting this? Number three. How to guarantee safety. Oh, as a matter of fact, um, no, 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 no. I ain't finished with number two yet. Now, I'll just give you a couple more scriptures, real quickly. If you abide in me, Pastor, gonna, 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 Pastor, you, you tie me and you check me. Um, John sixteen twenty three says, and in that day, 
you shall ask me nothing. He's talking about today. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Jesus said so. That's his shall. He shall give it to you. And in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, I know Sister Janice loves this one. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. We need to get this. We need to get this. Jesus is not playing games with us. This is the Son of God that is speaking. He said, believe that you have it, and you shall have it. But you have to believe that you have it. First, you have to ask, then believe that you have it. And Jesus himself said, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And I use that for casting out demons. If you cast out the demons in the name of Jesus, he says he will do it. Nothing can stand. Nothing can stand in his name. This is the word of God. These are the shalls and the wills of God. Now, how to guarantee safety? I love this one in Psalm 91. It says, Who will I deliver him? I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I'm a little fast for the guys, but that's okay. I, I will answer him. Praise the Lord. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? This is the word of God. But first of all, he has to set his love upon God. This is where we miss it. Sometimes we do everything. All day we walk, we play, we look at movies, we look at shows, and then five minutes before you go to bed, you go before your knees and you're, and you're yawning before God. No, seriously. And you're yawning before God. That's not setting your love upon God. God in the morning, God in the midday, God in the night, just God. You set your love upon God. If you set your love upon God like that, God has promised. He promised to deliver. He said, with long life, I will satisfy you. Long life. People like to put you in the grave quicker than you should go there. I, you know, they had an old sister here, Sister Scantlebury. She always used to complain to me or people telling her she's old. She's old. I said, don't worry with them. Let God tell you that. I was speaking to my sister-in-law. By the way, my sister-in-law is here from Grenada. She's the one who, stand up, um, Mrs. Bayer, and let the people see who you are. She's the one whom God gave a direct, you're talking about a message from God? You're talking about a message from God that changed me? She called me from there and gave me a direct message from God. I could never forget that. But we were talking the other day about dying, and she said, you know, she, knows, she knows she's going to 100. And I say, I know I'm going to 120. That, that's what God has, has, has said. Now, it's okay. If you don't believe it, that's up to you. But I have set my love upon him. To the point where sometimes my wife complains that I don't love her enough you know, because I give God too much love. I take too much time in study and prayer. And that is not good, eh? You have to balance it. But the point I'm trying to make is this. You cannot get the results until you do the action. And when you do the action, the results shall come. And I believe the word of God, saints. I believe the word of God. And the other one is how to prosper materially. The Bible says in Luke 6, 38, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. I said that the other night. I think it was Wednesday night. This is the way to prosper. And in Proverbs 3, 9 and 10, it says, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increases. So shall thy bounds be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with, I love those shalls, with new wine. He's talking about inventory, production, sales, whatever it is. This is the word of God. But you have to pay attention. Action is needed for consequence. Are you willing to take action? This is just a, a preliminary. You have to go into the word yourself. 
and see what the word says. See the action that you need to take concerning your needs, concerning your situation. I am doing this for myself. You do this, but I'm just giving you these here for now. Honor the Lord, he says, with your substance. And number five, how to have success in career, calling, and ministry. The Lord gave me that one morning while I was praying. and He gave me straight. I was a word from God. I heard it in my spirit, and I went and I found it. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall, oh glory be to God, direct thy path. He shall. Trust in the Lord, not with part of your heart. With all your heart. But I think the one, I think where we really have a big problem is leaning onto our own understanding. Sometimes... Sometimes we get a feeling, eh? we get a, 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 a strong feeling to do something, right? And, and we, we do that thing. I had to talk my business again. The other, the other day I was leaving my house and I got this strong feeling that my gate was open, my back gate. And I had to back up to see my back gate open. And I backed up, backed up, next thing I hear, boop! I hit the neighbor's pole, um, post, what we call it, post, mailbox pole, ship the man mailbox pole, next thing my gate was locked, lean not, sometimes you're laughing, but sometimes you get these strong urges, these strong feelings, and I tell you something, there's a danger, even while you're praying, they come, a pastor told me he was praying, and the Lord, you know, strong urge, and as soon as he got up, Something happened. Something came to him and he told her that it was wrong. You have got to check everything. You have got to prove everything. You have got to know this. So, so I, I, I am kind of learning now. Don't pay attention sometimes to these strong feelings. Now it's not all the time it happens like that. There are some people whose strong feelings really are the spirit of God. But a lot of us, when we get strong, strong feelings, we must wait. The Bible says, lean not onto your own understanding. You see, because your spirit is heightened. Your spirit is who you are. You were born with your spirit. You grew up with your spirit. You learn. Everything you have learned is in your spirit. So you're going to take action based on your spirit. And the Bible says, humble yourself before God. I can get up here and do a lot of stuff, but I got to watch it. I look at myself on a YouTube video sometimes and I'm, I don't like what I see. I don't. You, you, you have to humble yourself sometimes and let the spirit of God lead because your spirit could take over. So he said, lean not unto your own understanding. And I mean, don't rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God and he will direct. Look at your director. Yeah? Look at the director that you can have. Think about it. Who do you want better to direct you than God? He will direct your path. If you trust in him with all your heart. If you lean not onto your own understanding. And if you acknowledge him for who he is. And number six, which is the last one. How to maintain, and I have a note, to maintain. Huh? Maintain, not, not, not to get what we, are, what we already have. How to maintain a clean and a holy life. Maintain. In 2 Corinthians 7 1, Paul says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Hmm? When I read that some time ago, I said, because they, I, you know, you learn that your spirit got born again. You know, your spirit is so wonderful, so born again. I read that over and over before I understood it, and the Holy Ghost showed it to me again. Paul is saying, cleanse yourself. There are filthinesses in our spirits. 
No, it doesn't mean that we're going to hell. It doesn't mean that we're not saved. It doesn't mean, does not mean my children, when they behave badly, they're still my children. But they need to change in some areas. And he's saying, cleanse yourself from all filthiness of spirit and flesh. Perfecting holiness. So we just can't run around, you know, uh, freely just doing anything we feel like. We got to follow the word of God. We got to pray. We have to ask the Lord what he wants us to do and what he wants us to stop doing. And John, 1 John 1, 8 and 9 says this. And this is a, 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 a scripture I always use for myself. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. And he's speaking to Christians. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It will happen if we take the action. If we say we don't have sin, we're fooling ourselves. Like in Trinidad, they say, you're mama again yourself. But if you confess your sin, and I do that all the time. I don't know all my sins. Some of it I know. And some of it you know. You know pride. You know fear. You know anger. You know unforgiveness. You know greed. You know com you, some of it we know. But there are some that are so deep we really don't know. But we need, when he say confess your sins, he's saying to recognize the fact that you do have sins in you. And because of that, you confess that before God. And God is so wonderful. Wonderful that he forgives. You see, the blood of Jesus is so powerful. It's potent. It's good for everything, for every man. Nothing could get away from the blood of Christ. And when we confess our sins, Christ will forgive us. God will forgive us and wash us and cleanse us. I feel led to stop right here. I was going to bring you through the other areas of God speaking, but I'm going to stop right here. I want you to go and search the word. I'm when I, Definitely, I'm looking up for myself and I want to look up for you too. Don't take things for granted. I know we're saved and we can sing and we could be very happy about it. But there are actions that we must take, saints. You know, we, 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 we love to repeat the consequences. Get to the action first. And the shall will happen to you. I want you to, you can come, Minister Simon, and I just want you to um, sit where you are in your seat and do what Jesus says here. Yeah. He says, if you ask anything, anything in my name, I will do it. I will do it. If you ask anything, I will do it. If you abide in me, my words abide, you shall ask anything. I want you to take a hold of your conditions now, whatever they are. Whatever they are. You know what they are. Come on. Follow the word of God. Huh? Take action right now. Think about it. Be specific as much as you can be specific. If you do not, you cannot understand the, the problem, ask God to give you a prayer. I do that a lot of times too. Lord, why, how, how should I pray this prayer? What should I say? And when you pray this prayer, the Bible says in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, believe that you have what you ask for. Believe that you have what you ask for. Every day, give God thanks for it. Believe it. Do like Abraham. Believe it and you shall have it. This is the word of God. Let us get serious. Serious about the word of God. Right now, bow your heads and talk to God. This is personal now. We prayed for the church. We prayed for the world. and <clears throat> This is personal. You have situations that you are dealing with. And you are in the house of God. The Son of God said to you, ask. He himself said so. Ask. Ask.
a good thing to confess first to tell the Lord tell the Lord you know a lot of things you don't know you don't understand but you confess you repent let the blood of Christ cleanse you and with that in place everything else is going to flow the shall and the will the shall and the will of God the consequences of your action based on the word of God will happen Praise God. Ask things. Confess, repent, ask. Confess, repent, and ask. God loves you. God is a loving Father. He is a loving, loving, loving Father. When you have children, you know how much you love your children. He says, No good thing, no good thing will he withhold. From them that walk uprightly. And how do you walk uprightly? You walk in his son. There's nobody more upright than the son of God. Jesus Christ the Messiah. And we are in him. And because we are in him. We walk uprightly by faith. Even if we have some faults. Yes. But we walk uprightly in Christ. No good thing would he withhold from his son. No good thing would he withhold from you. If you walk in Christ. Get that faith in Christ. Be landed and grounded. That you are in the Son of God, in the Messiah. Fix it today, saints. Whatever it was, how long has been troubling you? How many times you've come to the altar? Fix it today by yourself, you and God and the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Fix it today.